Hello everyone, how are all of you doing? Welcome to yet another exciting session of Baiju Social Science Classes. Now today I'm very excited because we are going to start with our first history lesson for grade 8 which is how, when and where. Now before I actually get into this particular chapter, let me ask you a question. Are you one of those people who usually finds it very difficult to study history? You know, I think I already know the answer to this question. During my live sessions, I have so many people telling me, Ma'am, we find history so difficult. It's so difficult to study. <laughs> well, don't worry because with the help of this particular lesson, we will learn how to learn history in a much better way. So, the chapter How, When and Where will first help us understand the relationship between dates and history and we know that dates are very important for history. This chapter will also help us to understand or comprehend the periodization of Indian history. Now, in just in case this sounds very complex, do not worry about that because we're going to be explaining it later and you will understand it, right? Not just that. This particular chapter will also help us to compare and contrast different sources used by historians to study the colonial history of India. Now, isn't this great? We're going to be doing so much in this chapter. We're actually going to learn how to study history better. So, today in this first part of how, when and where, we will be studying what is history we will be understanding why we should study history and what will happen if we do not study it. We will also be looking at how we study history and understand if there is any methodology to be followed for better understanding or comprehension, right? Now, I'm very excited about this next part to tell you this because one of the best ways to study this particular lesson or chapter is through the 5W1H framework! <laughs> okay, I purposely created a lot of drama for this. But do you know, I mean, do you know what the 5W1H framework is? <laughs> After all of this drama that I did. So let me tell you. This 5W1H framework basically asks us very basic questions like What? Why? Who? How? Where? And when? So basic, right? But do you know what is the use of this particular framework? Well, this particular framework will help us to study anything in detail by asking the right questions. Now, isn't that really helpful? So let's understand how this works. Now, let me apply this particular framework that I've spoken to about to our chapter that we have to study. So, in terms of the first question that we had, basic question, which is what? We will ask ourselves, what is history? Then the second question is why? So we will ask ourselves, why should we study history and what will happen if we do not study it? Then the third question is how? So we will say, how do we study history and is there any methodology that is to be followed? Then the fourth is who? So we will say, who has written history? Then the fifth question is when? So we will say, when did history occur? And is there any time period that we should be focusing on. And then the final question is, where do we study history from? Right, so if you understand it, there are five W's and one H and that's why it's called the 5W1H framework. <laughs> okay, now the first question that we will explore is what? So we will explore what is history? Let's find the answer to this question together together, okay? Now, let me ask you a question. When is your birthday? Basic question, everybody knows the answer to that, right? So you would probably think of one particular date. So I'll just put some date down, okay? Supposing you say your birthday is 19th August 1990, for example, right? You gave me a date. That is the date of your birth date. Now, similarly, if I ask you, when is your father's birthday? What will you say? You will give me his birthday, right? You will say some date. So, for example, again, I'm just randomly writing something. You might say it's 21st June 1978, right? 
Now, if you understand, there are two events that we are talking about here. Number one is your birthday. Correct. And number two is your father's birthday. Right. Now, we can easily see that your father was born before you. How do we know that? Because 1978 comes before 1990. So, you know he's born before you. Right. So, without these dates, others, which means other people, will not know when you or your father born. So, dates are so important, you understand? And in fact, this is why you have a special column set aside for date of birth for most important documents that we have, like a marks card or a Aadhaar card, driving license, passport. I mean, most of our documents have it, right? Okay, I think you're probably wondering, why am I saying all these things? Well, that is because I want to tell you the importance of dates and how they are related to the entire subject of history. They are very, very important. Okay. Okay. Now, I know that you're probably thinking, but what does history have to do with your and your father's birth date, right? I mean, how are these things related? Well, no worries. We will find the answer to this soon also. Okay. Let's talk about our example. From the above example, we understood that dates tell you the order in which events occur, which means like in terms of your birth dates, your father's birthday came before your birthday, right? He was born before. So the process of arranging these events in the order that they occurred is called chronology. The fact that your father's birthday came before you. First your father's birthday happened, then your, uh, then your birthday happened, right? Now, once you know the dates, uh, and in this case dates and years, you can then go ahead and find the relationship between the events that occurred on those particular dates. And the difference between these dates, in, in this case birth dates, can be called a time period or a period of time. So we're talking about the period of time or the time period between your father's birthday and your birthday, right? And in this time period, there would have been so many changes that would have occurred, right? And finding these changes that have occurred over a period of time or over a time period is called history. Isn't that really cool? So we've answered our first question as to what is history? Now, let us move ahead and talk about our second question, which is, why should we study history and what will happen if we do not study history? So, tell me, what will happen if we do not study history? Well, if we do not study history, we will not know the changes that have occurred over time. Changes such as um, how societies or systems of technologies, uh, whatever these things are, how they were earlier and how they are now. And knowing these changes will give us a much better understanding of the world that we live in, right? So, it's so important to study these changes. But wait, this brings me to a question. Is history only about changes? I mean, how important are dates to study in history? What do you think? Well, dates are very important and many historians in the past believed so too. And that is because history was always associated with an account of big events like uh, battles, for example, for which we do have precise dates. For example, we know that atomic bombs were dropped over the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki on 6th August 1945 and 9th August 1945 respectively. So we have the actual date, right? And this is an important event. Then another important date that would come to my mind is India becoming a republic on 26th January 1950. Again, a very important event. So you see, Whenever we talk about an important historical event, then in that case, dates become really, really important, right? Okay, now dates are very important, we know that. But now take a look at these pictures over here. Supposing I ask you to tell me, when did Indians start using chai for the first time? Or when did, when did they start using wheels? Can you give me an exact date? No, you may not be able to give me the exact date because Indians started using these things over a period of time. So, one single date cannot be attributed to these events, right? So, this means that you are trying to find the history of chai or the history of wheels. 
but you may not be able to provide a specific date as to when these particular events occurred. But does that mean that we cannot find the history of these things? No, the answer is no. We still can find it by studying the time period in which Indians started using these things. So, even though history is synonymous with dates, these are very, very important, we will at times need periods of times or time periods so that we are able to understand history better. Right? Now, let's come back to dates. We know that dates are important and there are so many dates in history. Like, for example, you had the Quit India Movement uh, in August 1942. You had the storming of the Bastille on 14th July 1789. You know that the First World War was between 1914 to 1918. But how, who, who decides what dates are important in history and how exactly? Okay, let's understand this. So, the importance of a date is decided based on two factors. Right, what are these two factors? The first factor is, number one, the relevance of that particular event to the lives of the people. And number two, the second factor is, the perspective of the people who are talking about these events. Okay, let me explain this with an example. Now, in the histories written by British historians in India, the rule of each governor general was considered very important and these histories began with the rule of the first governor general who was Warren Hastings and ended with the last viceroy which was Lord Mountbatten. And in separate chapters of our history textbook, we have read all about the deeds of these different governor generals, right from Hastings to Dalhousie to Cannon to Lawrence and so many, right? I mean, in fact, it was a never-ending succession of governor generals that we had to actually study about, governor generals and viceroys for that matter. Now, all the dates in these history books were linked to their perspectives. I mean, I'm talking about the governor generals, right? Their perspectives, their activities, the policies that they framed, and as well as their achievements. It was as if there was nothing outside their lives that was important for us to know. And the chronology of their lives marked the different chapters of the history of British India, right? This was the first one, this was the second one, this was the third one. So, the lives of these governor generals became important to Indian history as we were obviously ruled by the Britishers. And for them, the rule of their governor generals and their perspectives were relevant. You see, so these are the two factors that actually play a part, right? In terms of dates and what is really important. Now, so far, we have dealt with what is history. We've gone ahead and spoken about why do we need to study his history, right? Now, let us move on to our third question in our framework, which is how do we study history? And is there any methodology that needs to be followed to study history? But why is this so important to understand how we should study history? Well, it is really important if you think about it because after learning the importance of a topic or concept, it is very necessary to know how to learn that topic or concept, right? So let us now understand how to study history. But before I get into how to study, a, a study history, let me ask you a question. Think about how your grandparents would describe their life to you so far. Think about it, like what would they say? If you go and ask them, they would definitely be talking about their childhood, they would be talking about their teenage years, they would be talking about their middle age, and they would be talking about old age, most probably, right? So in the middle years, they would probably talk about their marriage, their kids, their job, and lastly, what happens in their old age, right? So as in, what are they doing now? So if you observe closely, I actually asked you to find out the history of your grandparents from their perspective, right? Isn't that so cool? This is because history is about tracing changes. So in the answer that they gave, they would talk about how things were once upon a time and how they have evolved over time, right? Oh, this used to happen when we were children and now it is like this, right? 
So if you observe their answers, you will find that your grandparents have demarcated their life events into four distinct periods, right? Time periods, which is childhood, teenage years, middle age and old age, right? Now coming back to our topic. One advantage of this distinction is that it helps us to understand the sequence or the order in which various events took place, right? Like this happened in childhood, this happened in teenage, this happened in middle years and this happened in old age. And also because each division will have certain common things, it makes it easier to group and study these different time periods together. So for example, certain things will be common between childhood, some will be common between teenage years, some things will be grouped together for middle age and some things will be grouped together for old age. So if you think about it similarly, we spoke about the history of our grandparents, but basically if you think about it, any history can be divided into different time periods. And this process of identifying the different time periods is called periodization. For example, your grandparents periodized their life history while answering your question into these different time periods, right? So now we have received our answer to our question of how do we study history? We study history through periodization. And I think we've done a lot for one session. So I think we should come to the end of today's episode. But let's quickly have a recap of what we learned today so that we do not forget it. Today we learned what is history, right? We spoke about history being the changes that occur over time. We spoke about why we should study history because we want to see what has happened over time, right? And we basically understood that if we do not study history, then what will happen? We won't know the changes that have occurred and we will not be able to understand our world in a better way. We also looked into how to study history and understand if there is any particular methodology that has to be followed for better understanding or comprehension, which was basically periodization, right? Now, this is the end of today's chapter, but before I go, I have a quick question for you as always. Can you tell me if there is a precise date for the spread of Jainism in India? What do you think? Let me know your answers in the comment section below. I will eagerly be waiting for them. Any doubt that you have about this chapter also, please uh, drop your comments in the comment section below and we will try our best to answer this for you. And definitely view all our sessions on the Baiju's 6 to 8 channel. We have a lot of sessions here for you as always. So do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. I'm going to see you really, really soon for the next session. All right. Bye-bye.